I guess, um, yeah, we can start off with uh, the most significant travel sure. disruption. Oh, if you want to come right up, yeah, Mike. Yeah, sure. Yes, I guess we can start off with the most uh, significant travel disruption. Uh, WestJet saw the December 23rd cancellation of all flights in and out of Pearson. Uh, you attributed it to weather, but we saw plenty of other airlines, including Ethiopian Air, take off and land in Pearson. Um, what was unique about WestJet when it comes to the weather? Was there anything else going on there? Yeah, I mean, weather obviously is, is the, the sorry. Thank you for weather was obviously the, the reason for the decision that way. When we take a look at making a cancellation decision, we look at the forecast, we look at it as we progress towards the day. We did not want to get ourselves into a situation with the incoming weather where we were making cancellations like the public had seen for the days prior, cancelling in the moment. What we wanted to do is be proactive and have the ability to allow people not have to drive in in the inclement weather and have a reset for the next day going into uh, into uh, 24th and 25th. So issues with uh, labor and flight crews, uh, not a factor whatsoever? No, no. What we were doing is, as we saw, we would had uh, days earlier, there was gridlock in, um, in Vancouver. We did not want to contribute to a gridlock situation in Toronto. We wanted to make sure we had the opportunity to keep everybody safe, not have them travel into the airport, and do our best to have a good restart on the 24th and the 25th to get travelers to where they needed to go. Do you understand the frustration of travelers? Of course we do. So if you understand the frustration of travelers, why is it that sometimes they have to go through hoops to get compensated? We, ha we have a regulatory obligation. I I'm not sure what you're referring to with respect to hoops. We have an obligation to respond and, and answer claims within 30 days. That's the rule in Canada and we meet that obligation. We respond to consumers within 30 days. A very small portion of them do then go to the CTA, which itself has an 18 month long backlog. And we're asking the government as well. We want that backlog to be eliminated on behalf of our guests. So, so that's, the pro like that's the process as it stands hiding, today. Hiding behind the 30 day that the regulation forces you to do, instead of going as fast as possible. Isn't it what the problem seems to be here as far as passengers don't care about the regulation? No, no one is hiding behind anything. This is a process everyone understands. And it's not that every claim is done on day 30. Some are done earlier. My point is that if you have a complaint with the operations and the decisions and what has impacted you from our company, you have the ability to complain to us and file a claim. And our obligation to, is to respond to you within 30 days. If you don't like that response or you disagree with that, that response, there is a regulator there for you, and that process is taking 18 months. And we've made that observation today. In situations like this, why is the onus on the passenger to file a complaint for like, you know, looking at some of the major cancellations or delays? You have a full flight manifest, you know exactly who these people are, their birth dates, their payment methods, where they live. Why is the onus there? Why can't you just go to the flight information and proactively do this? There's a few reasons for that. The first is that uh, not every guest on our plane is the same. Some are going to the Middle East, some are connecting, some are not. We're not a train going from Ottawa to Toronto where every guest is the same and has booked the same precise journey. So the regulations are based on where you've arrived in your final destination. So that, that is point one. The second point is that every traveler is different. And we, you know, for you it might be points that you like, for another it might be cash compensation, and we want to preserve to the greatest extent possible our ability to manage our relationship with our guests on an individual basis, and I think that's an important principle in our business. So the federal government moves ahead with a, sort of a scheme like more like they have in Europe, a default compensation, automatic compensation, you would be opposed to that? We don't think that's the priority for reforms. What we've talked about today is the fact that it is only airlines that have any responsibility or compensation obligations in Canada. And we think that is the priority that needs to change because your travel can be, can be delayed or cancelled for a multitude of reasons, not just the decisions that our company makes. So we think that's the priority and that's the fundamental change that should be made. So what kind of changes would you like to see? Would you like to you be able to go to the airport and say, your baggage system didn't work, now you compensate us? Is that what you would like to see? I think there's various ways that the government could proceed with this. I think first and foremost, transparency and information for our guests as in terms of the, who is I, actually, I, just I a second, just a second. But I don't want to go there. I okay. want to go between your relation between you and the airport, mm -hmm. for example. Is that something that you would be advocating, advocating the government give us the possibility to go back to the airport and say your de-icing was late now you compensate me it, it could work that way it could work in terms of greater regulations and transparency in terms of the ruling the rulings that the cta makes if the cta rules that you're entitled to a certain amount of compensation we believe that they should also advise you what the reason for your for your cancellation or delay was and the minister has said this himself your delay or cancellation can be the result of many different 
service providers, not just an airline. So we simply want the regulations to reflect that. Anything else? Yeah, just that for some of the regulations, are there any more specific areas you'd like to see in just that one request you heard from the airlines that they'd like to see more real-time information sharing? If that's the big question, I would be open to. Real-time information sharing by, oh, by whom? flight status for uh, the latest just to notify their passengers. So they're saying they're lacking in that real-time information. I don't know what the, oh, well, the okay, answer is to that. Sorry. Oh, it was just one of the uh, requests from um, uh, you know, Ms. Broom, and uh, you, I know you were in the room um, when she was mentioning this. They were talking about wanting more real-time information from the airlines so they can notify their passengers about delays. Is that something WestJet would be open to? I think that's part of our process. We have a lot of work to do with our airports. You've heard different testimony on tarmac delays and who does what and when, and I think there's a lot of work for us to do with our partners to iron out some of those things because we all agree that tarmac delays and those things are unacceptable for a traveler. Really travel season coming up with spring break, uh, March break. Um, are you going to do anything differently to prevent this kind of thing from happening again? Well, I think what we've said today is that there's two main priorities of focus for us coming out of this. One is how we communicate with our guests when things go wrong. We've definitely heard them loud and clear that that can be improved and we're seized with doing that. And second is overall improvements to our baggage management and communication. So those are the two areas on top of a broad lessons learned, but those are things that we think that can improve for when things go wrong. When things don't go wrong, we are running a very good airline that is on time and is one of the best in North America. When we have serious disruptions like the summer and weather, obviously those are the questions that we were getting today about what happens when things go wrong but when these existential events don't happen, we are running a very good airline on behalf of the Canadian public. Thank okay, you. thank you. Yes.